Hey, so I'm your host, Donald Brown, and we have back with us Davi Ruet. Davi is the chief economist at the Efficient Group. He is also a 42nd generational spin doctor for the South African Communist Party. Davi, <laughs> um, so, so we're definitely going to get to the economy soon. I just want to hear your opinion about Kilimanjaro. So you, you recently came back for Kilimanjaro. What was the highlights, the lowlights? What was that trip like? That was a, an allergy to you as well. And thank you very much for the invite. It's always very nice talking to you. And I think it's going to be especially nice this time around. Kilimanjaro was, I think I have to, if I have to summarize it in one word, I would call it emotional. Because that's, I think, uh, an, uh, that, that, that's something I experienced. Uh, and it was not that difficult to do. You need to be fit, but you're not in the, you don't need to be able to run a marathon in less than four hours. You need to be sort of moderately fit. It is very cold, very cold. You have to get used to not showering, and you have to get used to the fact that you're going to stink. <laughs> uh, and but but apart from that, you, you you see this majestic mountain, and it seems as if this mountain is getting closer and closer to you. And then you, so that was something that was wow for me. And when you got when I got to the onto the rim of the crater, looking inside the crater, that was. You simply cannot describe that and getting to the real peak as well. So, that was an emotional experience. It was so, really nice. So you're actually on the edge looking in. That's actually possible. Yeah. That's amazing. That, is, that, 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 was actually, that was actually quite quite interesting because it's relatively flat. Everything is walk. But the last day or the last evening, actually, you start summiting uh, with your last push. You start 11 o'clock in the evening so that you reach the, 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 the peak early in the morning the next day. I mean, that's quite steep, but that is where you're going up the actual crater. And you get to the rim, you get to the top, and then you look, suddenly you look into the crater. That's, wow. And then you walk on, this, on the edge of the crater up to the highest point. Hmm. Wow. And um, with the, with there some scary moments where you thought, ooh, no. that if I no, fall no, down no. now, it's it's going to be not Davi Ruet, it's going to be Davi Duet. <laughs> no, it's not like that. No, no, it wasn't like that. No, it's no, no scary moments like that. There, there were no scary moments. It was some tough moments, maybe in cold moments or so, but no scary moments. No. Mm. And is there any preparation involved to get to do this? Um, like I've said, you need to be fit. Not overly so, but you need to be fit, and you have to be. You have to know what's going on. It's important to understand what's going on. You have to move very slow because it's high. Uh, and it's very dry. It's a desert up there. There's nothing growing there, nothing. So you lose a lot of uh, uh, moisture, so you have to drink uh, um, uh, liquids all the time. You have to make a point of that. So move slowly, drink a lot of liquids. It's out of breath all the time, so you have to move slowly. Um, and, yeah, I think that's important. Stay, stay warm. That's very really cold. It's really cold. Mm. Uh, but it's an, an amazing, amazing thing. I would really advise anybody... You go give it a go. It's really amazing. No, definitely. That's definitely on my bucket list, um, especially now after your account. Um, yeah. Davi, okay, speaking about mountains, pivoting South Africa's economy. I think we're facing quite the mountain here in South Africa. Um, I think the technical term is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the technical term is also known as Muren. But what, what's the situation <laughs> now in South Africa? <laughs> Okay, well, I guess there are many ways of looking at the South African economy. Uh, I think what you're referring to is that I guess when people talk about the economy, the first sort of number that pops up is, is the economy in a recession? Are we talking about the recession in the South African economy? And, and the short answer to, the, to that is, well, we've probably been in the recession for a long time. And I think chances are very good that we are going, we are in fact in a so-called technical recession. So yes, I think we are in a recession. And we're waiting for for some extra data to see, of course, we uh, some uh, some spe- some last minute data to see what's going to happen in the, in the first quarter of this year, because the last quarter of last year was a negative economic growth quarter. So chances are quite good that we're going to see another negative quarter in the first quarter of this year, and that is a so-called technical recession. But if you go back and you compare us over time on a per capita basis, then you will see for the past 10 years, we've been getting poorer just about every year on a per capita basis. So if that is your measurement for a recession, then we've been in a recession for the most of the past 10 years. Another another metrics that you can use, you can compare us to other countries in the world. You can even compare us to sub saharan Africa, the poorest region in the world. 
And although we're still better off than most countries in sub-Saharan Africa, and all of them, in fact, uh, the rest of them are catching up with us very, very fast. While the, the guys that are better off than us, than us like, for example, some the so-called Tigers and, and uh, of course, the West, they are getting even better off. Um, so we are lagging behind compared to ourselves, and we are lagging behind or sort of getting the, some of the real laggards are catching up with us as well, and the rich guys are getting much, much richer. So it's not going well with the South African economy. We are probably in a, in a so-called technical recession as well. In fact, maybe the last point, uh, I think if you look at the data that we have available and with some estimates and some assumptions, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the South African Reserve Bank, a bunch of private sector institutions and private sector economists, they all reckon that economic growth is going to be around about 1% or, or rather 0.1% or zero for this year. So let's talk about zero economic growth for the year in total, for the year 2023. Hmm. Just quickly, um, Davi, uh, uh, just pivoting slightly, um, you mentioned sub-Saharan um, Africa. What is your opinion about Botswana? We'll, we'll get back to South Africa now, but I'm, I would just be curious to know about your opinion about Botswana because I think well, Botswana is a higher GDP per capita than South Africa, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, well, I've got two comments about Botswana and Namibia, and that is people referring, and of course they are countries, but they are so small. Botswana or Namibia, I don't really think they can be called countries. They are big places. That's all. I mean, they've got something like 3 million people each. And that, that is, that's a small city, you know. Um, and so I, you know, it's a kind of different economic rules apply to very, very, very sparsely populated countries like, for example, Botswana. But Botswana specifically up to relatively recently, I think they have been run, uh, politically has been quite stable, the country, although there are some signs that that political stability since they became independent, I think it was in 1966, uh, I think that in political stability that we became accustomed to in Botswana, that could be under threat, especially with the new president there. Mm. So good for up to now, but it's a tiny economy and they've got basically three products, some meat that they export, diamonds and some um, and, uh, tourism, of course. And by the way, I was in Botswana about three weeks ago riding a, 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 a bike, a, a mountain bike race in the Tuli. In the tuli between lions wow. and elephants and leopards and things like that, it is the most amazing place. It is really wow. astonishing, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, all we have here is political instability here in South Africa. Um, we should talk about that because I think we're going to see much more political instability going forward. We are we are at the beginning of a, a new political era in South Africa. We are at the beginning of the end of the ANC. That's going to be very disruptive. And uh, and I think I think that is that's the new that leads to a lot of uncertainty, of course. And investors don't like to invest in a country where they don't know who's going to be in the next government, for example, mm -hmm. and how, what the government's going to consist of and what their policies are going to be. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. On that note, um, solutions, solutions orientated. Um, I don't know if you've heard. Uh, you've spoken about a digital countries. Digital countries are the future of the world. I don't know if you've heard about new South Africa. The initiative that Rob Airsoft started. Um, he's got a website. He's got, I think, Scott. Yes, of course. Uh, I, saw, I saw. In fact, in fact, I saw. I watched the video of him this morning. I'm not 100 percent sure. I understand what he wants to achieve. I think he wants to sort of put the broad coalition of all different political parties together to get rid of the ANC. I think that's his main objective to get rid of the ANC. I think that's what he wants to achieve, which I think is a very good good idea to try to get rid of the ANC, but I don't really think he's a political animal as such. I think he's more of a, uh, what can you call it? He's perhaps a little bit more of a anarchist at the moment trying to get rid of the ANC government. Okay. Um, Donald. Go ahead. May I, may I ask, go back to Botswana, you said it might be under threat. You didn't say why or for what reason yeah. or what made it so, yeah. Yeah, they, 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 I don't, I'm not saying it is in a threat, but I'm picking some up some vibes that I do not like. Like, like for example, it. the current the current president, and I've forgotten his name, is a bit of a difficult name to pronounce. Uh, but he is uh, he's he's a bit, he's busy with a bit of a witch hunt against the previous president, oh, uh, Ian okay. Ian Kama. Uh, and that's not a good thing. I mean, there seems to be uh, that, that that's not a good start. You don't do stuff like that in a, a stable political 
As a, a country that's politically stable, but uh, but it's, it's it's early days still. Let's see what's going to happen. But but that's something that's that's something I don't. Like. Okay, got you. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask. Uh, you, yeah. I want to ask a question from my perspective, which is systemic uh, work that we do, and it's normally a very simple question. That is, what is the good in the bad? Now, if you ask this question to, I think, Johan Rupert, he would say he's very optimistic because we have reached the bottom of our economy and therefore from now on it will be just going up. So <laughs> I'm very curious to hear what's your response to what's the good in this bad situation? Yeah, there's, uh, it makes me think of what Winston Churchill once said about Americans. He said that you can always expect the Americans to do the right thing after they've exhausted the alternatives, all the alternatives. Uh, and I guess that is more or less where we are as well. We've really tried all the stupid things. None of those have worked, and we are in a situation now where we are forced to do the right things. And I can give you many examples. One is, is that we're actually busy in the process of privatizing everything that is under control of the state. Not because they want to, but because they haven't got a choice anymore. It is happening. It is, it is the de facto situation is that we are privatizing the state and enterprises. That's not part of the, the policy of the ANC, of course. And, but but don't be, make a mistake here. And maybe I can just point out, um, you know, I always tell people that we are currently so-called junk bonds, but we can go junker and junkster. <laughs> it can go even much worse. Don't underestimate how far we can still fall. And I just want to explain something that I'm very concerned about. We are, and we can talk and we can unpack that a little bit. But the fiscal policy in South Africa, that's what the Minister of Finance is responsible for, is highly expansionary. Now, what I mean by that is that the fiscal deficit, of course, the Minister of Finance is going to tell you the fiscal deficit is 4.5% of GDP, which is not true. It's closer to around 6% of GDP. If you want me to unpack that a little bit, I can do that, Donald. But the fiscal deficit is, in fact, probably in excess of 6% of GDP. That means that we've got a fiscal uh, fiscal accounts that is highly expansionary. That means that they take so much out of the economy by way of taxes but they borrow a lot of money and they spend all this money into the economy. So that's a, and there are reasons why they do that. They do that because there are so many people that 30 million people, in fact, that are directly, directly dependent on a state for a monthly income. So the state is spending all this money and in the process, state debt levels keep on going up. So that's a problem, but it boosts the economy in the short term. At the same time, the Reserve Bank, they see inflation is going up. There are, of course, all sorts of factors, international reasons and so on. But a very important reason why inflation keeps on going up is because we have a very uncompetitive economic environment, exactly because of mismanagement by, by, by the South African government. So the Reserve Bank, they only have one instrument available to them, basically, and that is interest rates. And they're stepping on the brakes because inflation is becoming a problem. So we have these two macroeconomic policies that are working exactly in opposite directions. The one is pushing the economy forward, and the other one is trying to pull the economy back, the South African Reserve Bank. Now, I can tell you, high interest rates is bad for the economy. It's a blunt instrument. It is causing economic harm and pain and all that sort of stuff. But that's all that we have left. Uh, because all the other macroeconomic policies, mostly of them, are pulling in the wrong directions and the Reserve Bank are basically forced now to increase interest rates in order to get inflation lower. And the problem with this is, is that politicians actually high, want high inflation because high inflation erodes state debt in the real terms. Okay, So they want high inflation. Also, politicians can't spend less for political reasons and especially with an election around the corner. And that means, but then if they keep on doing this, the Reserve Bank will keep on stepping on the brakes and the result will be weak economic growth. And it will go on like this. The best answer will be to fix the fiscal accounts, to create a more competitive environment, but politically that is not going to happen. And I, and I think this whole thing eventually is going to pop out in very high levels of inflation because the pressure on the Reserve Bank will keep on building up from politicians, and we see that we get already. Politicians, they want to nationalize the Reserve Bank. It's not going to change anything, but, but they, they think they're going to get closer to, the, closer to monetary policy and manipulate the Reserve Bank a little bit more. So they want to nationalize it. But more importantly, they want to change the mandate of the Reserve Bank. So that tells me one thing only. They want the Reserve Bank to have a dual mandate, to have a growth mandate as well, and that means to become soft on inflation. So you can, I expect, uh, over the next couple, in fact, it's there already, but I think the pressure on the Reserve Bank is just going to pile up from the politicians. 
trying to get the Reserve Bank to, to be a little bit softer on, on monetary policy and on, 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 on inflation. That means higher inflation, and uh, that also means weak economic growth. So I'm afraid, inevitably, uh, whether we do the right thing or the wrong thing, uh, the result will at least be, in the short term, weak economic growth. If we do the right thing, it will result in a deep recession initially and thereafter better economic growth, but politicians are simply not prepared to bite, bite the bullet. I hope it makes sense, but these two macroeconomic policy instruments are working against one another. And the right. economy you know, the economy is the, is the victim. So not a, short, not a, a good story in the short term. No. no, I can't see in the short term that there's going to be a short and in, The good story perhaps is, I, I just want to make the point that things can get much worse. <laughs> but the good story is, is that some there, there are some good signs out there. And the one is that the state is collapsing. We are, we've always been, since 1910, South Africa has been a very, a, a very strong centrally, uh, politically centralized a central controlled uh, country. So we're not a federation. We, Despite the fact that we have various provinces and we still have even more provinces, that is pretty much politically very, very much centralized. That is that is gradually fragmenting. And South, South Africa is becoming less politically centralized. The same is going for the economy. The, the state was... Uh, the, 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 the role of the state was very much centralized under control of the, of the politicians. That is also gradually becoming more fragmented and falling apart. Uh, and that creates a lot of opportunities. Of course, it's very disruptive, but it creates opportunities. Uh, for a very good example, look at the guys putting up all the solar panels. There's an opportunity. Look at people, for example, starting security companies because the police has uh, collapsed. So there's another opportunity. Of course, it will be better if we have a proper working police force. But the reality is, during times of well, collapse and disintegration, because that is in a large extent what is happening in South Africa, that creates opportunities and that in a way is a good, good news story.